In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. Hello, fathers, mothers, brothers, and sisters. Glory be to God for allowing us to see this wonderful day of bright Saturday, of joyous Saturday, a victorious Saturday. Throughout this week, we've been living the passion of Christ. Notice how I said living, not reading about it, not simply just meditating or thinking about it, but the church has been teaching us to live it. On Monday, we learned about the fig tree that was cursed and how that shows that on the outside we appear to be Christians, but on the inside we have no fruits. On Tuesday, it's known as the day of questions and answers, where Christ talked and answered the questions with the Pharisees and the scribes who were questioning him, trying to trap him, but he would answer in a ways so brilliant, so smart, that they had no response for him. On Wednesday, we remember the betrayal of Judas, and we remember the sacrifice of Mary of Bethany, where she showed us that Christ truly just seeks a contrite heart, where she washed his feet with her hair, where she spent all her money on perfume and anointed him for it. And then on Thursday, on Holy Thursday, Christ taught us many things. First, he taught us humility, where he got down on his knees and he done the unthinkable. Him being a master, him being a teacher, him being the creator of the universe, went on his knees and washed the feet of his disciples, telling them, if you want to be first, you must be last. He also taught us about the Eucharist, to partake in his flesh and blood, and this is the only way we'll have everlasting life. And then also, on this day of Thursday, Christ, he did the prayer in the Garden of Gethsemane, where we saw how he became fully man, where he willingly brought himself over to death, and he was praying to God saying, let your will be done and not mine. Doing this as a lesson for us that no matter what happens in our life, we say, God, let it be your will. Friday, we witnessed the beatings. We witnessed the false testimonies. We witnessed the spitting. And then we witnessed the crucifixion and death of our Lord. We witnessed the burial that Joseph and Nicodemus provided him. And now on Saturday, the question is, what happened? What do we do now? On Saturday, our Lord and our Savior, according to the teachings of the Fathers, He descended into Hades and He freed all those who were imprisoned. What we need to know, my brothers and sisters, is prior to Christ's coming, everybody who died was destined to go to Hades due to the fall of mankind. It doesn't matter if you were David the righteous, if you were Abraham, Isaac, or Jacob, or if you were Cain, or if you were one of the evil ones of the Old Testament, your fate was Hades. This is the reason why Christ came, to free us, to take us away. So while He was in the tomb on Saturday, He descended into Hades and freed them. St. Augustine, he gives us this analogy. If you think of death as a beast, it's a beast that devours you. Anybody who dies, this beast called death devours you. Doesn't matter if you're good or bad. Now when Christ died in the flesh, this beast called death tried to devour him. He didn't know that this was the medicine and the cure to death. And when he swallowed this medicine, he was defeated. He was fooled. He was tricked. And everybody was freed from Hades and brought into paradise. Now, the question is, what do we do with this? You may fall into three different categories. You may have not fasted at all this whole fast. You may have seen the Instagram posts, maybe done a couple of readings, but you weren't ready for the fast, and that's okay. You may have started the fast really strong. You may have prayed really strong the first three, four weeks, went to church faithfully, and then who knows, maybe school got tough, work got tough, life got tough, and you kind of withered away, and you didn't go as hard as you did in the early part of the fast. And then also, you may fall in the category of, you fasted the whole fast and it was magnificent. God blessed you, you felt intimate with your Creator, and you did everything you could. You offered to Him the sacrifice that you were capable of offering. Regardless of these three categories, on this day of Saturday, we all must wait at the tomb. We have to be at the tomb. We have to be there ready to receive the person who can free us from our tombs. If we're being honest, the reason why we're seeking this relationship with Christ, the reason why we went through this holy week, the reason why we went through this holy fast, the reason why we are Christians is to leave our tombs 
That is the sadness that we've experienced in this life. That is the depression we've experienced in this life. That is the pain and suffering. What did Christ say? I have come to give you life and give it to you more abundantly. So regardless if you fasted or not, regardless if you started strong and ended off weak, we still go to the tomb. We go to the church waiting for his resurrection, saying, Christ, please defeat this death that I am still living. I know you already defeated death, but my faith is weak. I'm still walking around as if I am dead. We go to the tomb and say, Christ, resurrect in my heart once again. Rule in my heart once again. This is what we do. So if you didn't fast, that's fine. Go to the tomb. Go to your church. Witness the resurrection. Say, Christ, give me the strength next year to fast. If you started off strong but didn't end off as strong, that's okay. Christ, I'm going to be at your tomb. Give me the strength next year, if it is your will, to be more diligent, to be more vigilant, to observe the whole fast and give you my whole heart the whole time. And if you fasted the whole fast and you feel like it went great, my brothers and sisters, be watchful. Because the 50 days after, even though it's a day of joys, we're, 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 we're still living the resurrection those 50 days. A lot of us get lax. We start to relax. We start to say, okay, time to eat. Brothers and sisters, protect the fruits you bore throughout this fast. So that is what Joyous Saturday is about. Is we wait at the tomb. We ask Christ to defeat the death in our hearts that we are still living. And resurrect and rule as king in our hearts once again. What's about Alexander?